Hello, I'm Maria Ressa. Welcome to Talk Thursday. With us today is Tovia Va'alua. He is Microsoft Philippines Office Division Lead. He joins us to talk about the potential of TV white space to boost internet connectivity within the Philippines. He's a very exciting man to talk to, so you'll see what I mean in a short while. TV white space uses UHF and VHF television frequencies um, for data communications. In the Philippines, it can provide a way to support government projects, relief efforts that need internet connectivity. In an interview with Rappler, Science and Technology Secretary Mario Montejo predicted that there will be 99% internet connectivity by 2015 if the DOST is successful in harnessing TV white space. Good day, we will talk about the future today, right now. <laughs> Welcome to Rappler. Yeah, thanks for having me. <laughs> it's very good to have you here. Yeah. Before we begin, mm -hmm. I want you to listen to um, Secretary Montejo's okay. promise not just to the public, but mm -hmm. to me personally, oh, yeah. <laughs> that he would bring 99% internet connectivity to the Philippines by 2015. Let's roll that Talk Thursday tape with Secretary Montejo. To address the connectivity, yes. we are looking at TV white space. This is a very cost-effective at being able to reach out to the unserved or underserved areas who has that set of connectivity. All other government service can be made available because of this improvement of connectivity. And we're talking of nationwide. By when? Again, we are, we are always bullish and we're always yes. positive thinking. Yes. 2015, 2016. That's the best news I've gotten in a <laughs> long time. 99% connectivity within three years' time. That we are that push, pushing for that. For that, that's what he says. Uh, that, so I've been, I've been telling to <laughs> Tovia what exactly uh, uh, Secretary Montejo said. So Tovia, is it possible? Well, that's a good question. I think um, you know prior to the you know, the broader knowledge of TV white spaces I think you know the ability to be able to provide connection to 99.9 .9 percent of the country didn't seem so feasible but now it becomes more and more of a of a potential reality now you know and you know, as, as you know, I could explain the number of different examples that we're seeing not only here in the Philippines but also outside of the country where where we're testing TV white spaces and we're seeing some amazing results. Well, so. in the, in the, at the APEC CEO Summit in mm -hmm. Bali, Indonesia, the first week of October, there mm -hmm. was a, a booklet on Asian innovations. Yeah. Microsoft was cited there also mm -hmm. as, uh, as for its experiment in TV white space yeah. in Singapore. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit, of, let's start with the basics. Okay. What is TV white space? What is this thing that I'm jumping off the walls about? <laughs> so so uh, TV white spaces is really about uh, know the ability to take something that you know a lot of people have been ignoring for some time I mean the, the amount of times that we sort of switch on TV and then you're sitting there and and there's you know as if you haven't tuned your TV you switch th through and you see these blank sort of channels now th those channels represent uh, I guess you know frequencies that are being unused so through uh, TV white spaces what we're able to do is actually take that frequency uh, which generally sort of resides in the 600, 700 megahertz frequency. Mm -hmm. And then through uh, a, a specific device, we're then able to convert that to 2.4 gigahertz, which is the broadband requirement. Now, um, the, the great thing, I guess the, the, the revolutionizing uh, capability of TV white spaces is the fact that oftentimes in places where you're unable to get, let's say, Wi-Fi or, or um, you know, the different types of signals, you're always able to get TV signal. And so, as long as you can get a TV signal, you know, a lot of the time you 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 know uh, you'll be able to get the the TV white spaces broadband connection. So. Actually, what people don't know, I, I, what most people don't mm -hmm. realize, is that the the cell phone signal isn't as robust yes. as the TV yeah. as a broadcast TV signal, yeah. correct? That's correct? So that's what what you're saying now yeah. is wherever television can reach, mm -hmm. internet can reach on yeah. that on that same space. Yeah. What exactly did Microsoft do in Singapore? Why so so one of the I, I guess one of the um, opportunities that were there was uh, if. Whenever you fly into Singapore, you see a whole bunch of different tankers out in the out in the water, right? And and in order for 
for uh, the 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 guys and and girls on the boat to to be able to access the internet. They Correct. have to come within cell signal uh, reach. Correct. With TV white spaces, however, you know, instead of coming in, let's say, two, two and a half kilometers of the shoreline, yes. they can now stay, you know, as far out as nine, possibly even ten kilometers, because the wavelength is a lot stronger and a lot uh, uh, broader mm. uh, when it comes to, to reach. So, you know, th we were able to actually test that, and I think there are a number of ongoing tests that we're seeing at the moment. So, it's it's changing the way people actually think, but also changing the way people actually operate, because it means that, you know, you don't have to have such a, a big cluster of, of tankers, I guess, sitting within the shoreline. Everyone's sort of more distributed. Mm. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, that's, that's interesting. Um, what about the Philippines? What are you doing here in the Philippines? So here in the Philippines, what we kicked off uh, earlier on in the year was we, uh, in in collaboration with, in partnership, sorry, with uh, USAID, uh, with Fisheries, and also with uh, DOST, Microsoft, uh, we uh, launched uh, with our partners a, a pilot to the fisher folk down in Behold. Now what was really exciting about that is what we're able to do is then sort of change the way that uh, we go about registration and licensing for these people, you know, and, and given that this is their livelihood, you know, in the past it would have required them to actually leave, come into, you know, into the city uh, or into the town and do sort of, you know, what seemed to them yes. as very tedious sort of paperwork. Uh, instead, through the ability of, of TV white space and being able to broadcast that signal out and then having available devices for them just to be able to register within their own within their own uh, areas yes uh, it suddenly changes the way that we can and it makes it a lot more faster and a lot a lot more accessible for for these people so we're changing the way a community can actually sort of facilitate their 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 way of life or and or trade correct I mean that goes directly to trade communication to trade um, Absolutely. originally when when secretary Montejo was talking about this when mm -hmm. I first heard about it, I yeah. thought, oh, there's no way it, it'll be mm -hmm. possible because we'll need new devices yeah. to try to access this. But what yeah. shocked me when I went to this Microsoft event last mm -hmm. week was that I just opened my computer yeah. and then looked at the signal, um, yeah. tried to log in on broadband, and just said TV white space, and I clicked and I was logged into the yeah. internet. I mean, is this will this be the way we access it? I, I th what we were trying to do there at um, our event at the CIO Summit was we were trying to start to, to get our, our CIO community to think broadly and think uh, wider. They, you know, maybe still within the work context, but also beyond the work context of how do we, how, you know, if we were able to get a highly pervasive capability out there to the broader community, you know, what differences would that make to the way they do business? Yeah. You know, a distributed workforce. You know, going beyond the the the, uh, the reach of you know cellular signals, yes. and etc. And so, I think the 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 feedback that we were receiving was, you know, people were interested and they were sort of saying, you know, very much like yourself, how are you doing it? Show us the device. So we found ourselves sort of walking around, pointing them out to these these end units, which sort of uh, the converters, if you will, of of the actual signals. And you know, I mean, they were j as surprised as we were when when we first saw it as well. So. For you, you've been working on this, and and yeah. you know, for you out there, we actually sat on a panel, and I put Tovia on the <laughs> spot, and I just said, "Is this really true?" And yeah. and he did say, "Yeah." So let mm. me let me ask you, why are mm. you excited by this? Well, for a number of reasons. Um, I think uh, for here in the Philippines, I I think that you know. You know, there are a number of communities that you know are obviously underserved when it comes to, to these types of uh, capabilities. If I look at, um, I guess research shows that whenever we increase the penetration of broadband, whether it's fixed, mobile, etc., your GDP comes up, right? Yes. So I think it's something like 1.3% for every 10% broadband uh, uh, penetration, your GDP comes up 1.3, 1.4%. And so if we're able to increase the penetration, you know, the, the impact on the, the economy locally will be absolutely significant. But then you know, thinking beyond that and thinking about accessibility of services and allowing people to sort of start to think outside the box of, you know, how do we take this and harness it to, to make it work, you know, uh, better for ourselves and, and um, make us think about, you know, how do we improve 
our way of living or, or the way we do things today. The, I guess the extension of that is, you know, being someone that's not originally from the Philippines, you know, I'd, um, as we were discussing before, I'm originally from, a, from an island deep in the South Pacific, you know, uh, very, very limited technology. And yes. so something like this yes. would revolutionize all of those different sort of uh, communities out there, you know, regardless of where they are limited infrastructure but they still have TV correct so imagine the, the impact that something like this would have on them so I think revolutionize yeah. and democratize it right Absolutely. access to it I Absolutely. would love to I mean we've done if you're interested in more uh, information about yeah. what's happening in Bohol Rappler has done a story yeah. on that just Google just search on Rappler and yeah. you'll you'll be able to see what it is why is Microsoft doing this I mean you know here here's the other part Microsoft yeah. is not making any money out of this. <laughs> so why is Microsoft doing this now? Um, I think it's always been our in, in our agenda. I mean, we, we made no secret about it. It's in our agenda to, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, every every uh, I guess company has a a responsibility to to meet that that you know. I mean, it's commonly referred to as corporate social responsibility, and and I think. You know, we take our side very seriously, and uh, obviously, and so, you know, wherever we see technology or new capabilities coming about that can actually help, you know, um, our underserved communities, help us to, to, you know, sort of fast track the the whole innovation curve. I think that's why we're we're really excited about this. I think oftentimes when we talk about new technologies, new and new. Uh, trends, uh, you know, specifically things like cloud and, you know, we talk about big data. You know, a lot of that is amazing, but a lot of that is still, uh, you know, uh, hinged on the availability of connection, okay. connectivity. Okay. And if we increase connectivity and we increase the availability of these types of services, you know, worlds are oyster and you can, you know, start to think, wow, you know, exponentially as opposed to that whole linear <laughs> learning curve. So. And yeah. beaming very widely because <laughs> you know I I, I agree because in mm. the end it does start with connectivity in yeah. terms of innovating anything, mm. um, but in terms of of what you see here now, I, okay. I guess let me. When people throw around technical terms, mm -hmm. they te they tend not to see how it anchors yeah. in real life, right? Okay. You know, with the fisher folk in yeah. Bohol, mm -hmm. um, could you give an example of how it's changed their life? Like, tell a story of what you've seen or. How, how did someone use it to do something they couldn't have done before, and what's the possible impact of this? Well, that, that's a um, good, you know, it's, a, it's a really good point. You know, oftentimes, you know, and it's oftentimes when we actually uh, bring new capabilities to the market, we, we sort of don't take it right down to the nth degree to see how it's landing. I think specifically for the Fisher folk, I, um, the the mere fact that these these communities no longer had to sort of, you know, leave their their own space and actually sort of travel all the way back in and go through this whole registration process, etc., in order to be able to actually qualify or actually be counted as someone that could actually um, make a living off of their their everyday uh, activity, right? You know, and be able to actually serve them where wheresoever they may be and yes. whatsoever they're doing at the time suddenly makes it a lot easier for them. Otherwise, we're not actually seeing these people, and these people are sort of, hap you know, um, uh, I guess existing under the radar, right? Yes. And so it's it's beyond just sort of a registration or licensing process. It's it's also sort of thinking about how do we protect these people, how do we serve these communities. Yes as well by, you know, through this, uh, through partnership with the fisheries, DOSC, etc. Beyond the fisheries piece as well, I think um, in, in agreement, or I guess in agreement with the, the Bohol um, uh, local government, we're also looking to open up, you know, uh, e-centers. So thinking about learning centers that yes. suddenly have the capability to be, to be connected through TV white spaces yes. and through uh, being able to, to provide uh, devices for, um, I guess, students and people who are wanting to, to uh, broaden their education. Yes. Suddenly that, you know, a lot of that stuff was not possible because signals weren't reaching. But now with TV white spaces, yes. where, where, where your general cell Wi-Fi or cell signal stops, 
we can reach out to those communities. We don't have to displace them, yes. bring them away from their environment to, in order to sort of feed them and then take them back. We can do it right there. We meet the people where they're at. That's the, that's the part that we're really excited about. Can I about. ask you, I mean, again, I read a lot of stuff mm -hmm. about how people, communities around the world are yeah. using this. And one of, the, one of the case studies I read about was in Africa. I think it was in Kenya mm -hmm. where, um, and they were, again, fisher folk. But yeah. basically, the, the, the fisher folk in this one community mm -hmm. uh, was able to not, they, because they got connected, they were able to actually create e-commerce sites, yeah. online marketplaces, mm -hmm. so that they could keep the fish in the fish pen yeah. and only harvest the ones that, that, the, that sort they've already sold. Yeah. So then they don't have to worry about um, expensive things like refrigeration yes, or correct. their product spoiling. Yeah. This is that is that similar? Is that a potential application also here, or absolutely. am I jumping ahead? No, no, oh. no, no, no. Absolutely. Okay. So, so th if we if we fast forward maybe uh, six to nine months, what we will start to see is uh, exactly the same thing happening here in, in Bahol. So suddenly we're we're, we're sort of. Uh, shifting the way that they've been able to do business up to, uh, because they you know again to your point no connection therefore how do we connect the centralized markets yes. to to the external providers mm -hmm. and you know I think we've we've been trying to do this for some time through sort of physical connections of flying uh, product into the central markets or local markets but you know just adding another layer of connectivity and obviously through the help of TV uh, white spaces this suddenly accelerates it a lot a lot more for us. So. I, I'm very excited <coughs> about it. I mean what are the dangers ahead? Do you see any what's any cautionary signals we should be looking at? Um, at the moment uh, nothing that that I mean obviously we're, we're constantly checking to see what sort of risks may um, you know m may result from this I think uh, at, at present to uh, you know to be perfectly honest at present all we see at the moment is, is real upside I mean you know the ability to be able to take a signal and using sort of low powered receivers um, and uh, w we were discussing this uh, at the summit last week and we we're thinking about imagine an area where people uh, for whatever reason, where th they're unable to to monitor an area because of, let's say, um, uh, pollution or heavily uh, hazardous materials, yes. etc. And th the only other way you could today monitor that is by putting sort of cellular uh, signals and cellular posts, etc. Which but is very expensive. Expensive, hard, hard to maintain, right. very expensive to maintain, but very difficult to sort of monitor, switch on, switch off, battery Correct. life, etc. But imagine the ability to have this pervasive signal that sort of spans across an entire area and now can work with very low, low, low powered receivers, which you could then just you know, literally throw from an airplane or from a, f from, from a safe distance and then be able to switch them on, switch them off and be able to monitor that, you know, none of that is possible, uh, well, s none of that is possible without sort of incurring a very high yes, expense. Yes, absolutely. But through TV white spaces, we see a whole number of different opportunities now um, as a result, so. It will encroach into the areas of other big businesses like, um, television stations, yes. the telecommunications, yes. what reaction have you gotten from these two industries? I think um, to, to, be, to be honest, the, you know, we've had a lot of support, um, which is really fantastic. I mean, it means that, you know, that, you know and w we're very sensitive in, in terms of you know, not wanting to sort of uh, encroach on other people's uh, business. And so, uh, thankfully, th you know, um, the, I guess the, the responsibility sort of resonates across, across all. And so far, the, the support has been very, uh, uh, it's, it's been very obvious. And I think one of the, the key areas where we've been able to sort of collaborate openly is you know, uh, this sort of presents an opportunity for us to actually explore those markets 
where, let's say, telecommunications have not been, been uh, able to explore as yet. And that they've had a difficult time doing it. Because the Absolutely. other thing with the television signal is it can cut across yes. mountains. I yeah. mean, that, that cell phone signals can't. Um, I, my last question yeah. uh, is really about you. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're a Samoan, a Pacific yeah. Islander. Uh -huh. uh, uh, and working on this project, you talked about the impact it would have in, in uh, in a in a place like Samoa, I mean, mm -hmm. I guess in in developing countries and developing communities which don't have, which are isolated, yeah. oftentimes when you're isolated, development is mm -hmm. slower, yeah. access to information is slower. I guess for countries like yours, like ours, um, mm -hmm. how fast? I guess what what will this technology now allow us to do? I think you know becoming a good global citizen is always going to be uh, high on the agenda of any government. Um, I think the ability to be able to take, you know, uh, the the wealth of knowledge that sort of resides in in your in your people and be able to bring that together with other, you know, from a not only from an engagement and a and a collaborative perspective, but more an innovation. Yes perspective, being able to get people together from different communities, yes. you know, separated by water, separated by land, and be able to actually, you know, crisscross ideas and sort of start to think uh, more globally as opposed to sort of locally, if anything. So I think, you know, taking a technology like this uh, back to, to my uh, home where I was born and being able to sort of share that openly, and I like the way you put it, sort of be able to democratize um, a, you know, availability, and, uh, availability of something like this and be able to then scale it broadly. I think that's going to, it, that will be the game changer for us. So, I'm excited. You always get excited talking to you. Thank <laughs> you so much. Thank you very much. Uh, we have been speaking with Tovia Ba'alua. He mm -hmm. is with Microsoft Philippines, his office division, but more importantly, he is a Samoan. Um, he is also the man in charge now mm -hmm. of the pulling out TV white space in the Philippines, mm -hmm. the potential to use TV white space to boost connectivity within the Philippines. Microsoft is working with DOST, mm -hmm. with USAID, mm -hmm. um, to try to get this out, and there are test communities out there now. I got on it. It's very exciting times ahead. Yeah. I'm Maria Ressa. Thanks for watching Talk Thursday. Keep the conversation going. You can tweet at Rappler.com or go on the Facebook account. Tavia, do you have a Twitter or Facebook account? Yes, I do. Okay. Okay. What is your? Um, you can follow me at uh, Bigger Than TV. <laughs> uh, right. Bigger Than TV. <laughs> yeah. um, at Bigger Than TV on Twitter. Thanks again for joining us.